Welcome to this tutorial presented by oraclecoach.com. This is Claire Rajan and in this video segment I'll demonstrate the use of the SELECT statement in a PL SQL block. I have SQL star plus open. I've issued the set server out on command because I'll be using a number of DBMS output line statements in the different examples that I'm going to show you and I want the output of DBMS to be displayed on the screen. I'm also connected as the user HR. The first thing that I'm going to do is write a simple SELECT statement that will retrieve the salary of an employee whose first name is Lex. So the query is SELECT SALARY FROM EMPLOYEES WHERE FIRST NAME EQUALS LEX the value that's displayed is 17,000. Notice the output. It's in the form of a table. It's a table that has one row and one column. Now whenever you write a select statement at the SQL prompt, the output will always be in the form of a table. And if you want to display the output, let's say with a string or you want to process this value further, the select statement must be written inside a PL SQL block. I'm going to save uh, this particular statement to a file and I'm going to call this as, uh, I'll say save A1. It tells me created file A1. Let me edit A1. Here's the select statement uh, and what I would do is uh, include the word begin which indicates the beginning of the body of a PL SQL block. I'm going to terminate my select statement with a semicolon. I'm going to include end as the end of the program. So here is the select statement that I wrote inside a PL SQL block. I'm going to close the file. I'm going to save it. I'm going to execute the block. Now it gives me an error saying that an into clause is expected in the select statement. So when you write a SELECT statement inside um, a PL SQL block, the INTO clause is mandatory. Let me edit A1 and the INTO clause is written after the column name. I'm going to put in the word INTO. But what comes after INTO? It's a memory variable. A memory variable that will be populated with the value that is retrieved by the SELECT statement. Now because I need the name of a memory variable, I should have declared that memory variable in the declaration section which I'm going to introduce before the begin. I'll create it as vSalary. It holds an, a sa an employee salary so I'm going to declare it as number of 10,2 and uh, in the into clause I'm going to write uh, into vSalary. Okay, so my select statement has now become select salary into V salary from employees where first name equals Lex. Let me save and exit at A1. This time I don't get an error but it doesn't give me an output. The output is not being generated or nothing is being displayed because I don't have a statement that displays the output on the screen. I'm going to clear my screen, edit A1 and the statement that I need to write is the DBMS output line statement. And I want a string that reads as the salary of Lex is followed by a colon, closing the quote, followed by a double pipe and then because I uh, I want to display the salary value. Now let me show you what would happen if I referenced the column name in the DBMS output line statement. I get an error and the error saying that the identifier salary must be declared. So it didn't recognize the column name. Now because the select statement retrieved the value and put it into the memory variable, the value can be referenced only out of the memory variable. So I'm, in, I'm introducing uh, the variable as V salary and because I know it's a numeric value, I, I always like to include the two char function. So it's at A1, it tells me that the salary of Lex is 
17,000. So I just showed you an example of how uh, when you write a select statement inside a PLSQL block, it becomes mandatory for you to include the into clause and define a variable that will hold the value. Uh, which was retrieved by the query. So this example had only one column being retrieved. I'm going to edit A1 so that I can have two columns uh, being retrieved and populating two memory variables. I want to see both the salary as well as the last name of the employee called Lex. So for last name I'm going to create a variable called VL name. It's the last name type of variable so um, var char 2 is good. I'm going to define the size as 25. Now I want two columns to be retrieved from uh, the table so I have select salary comma last underscore name into and I have to mention two memory variables that correspond to the two columns. So V salary corresponds to salary positionally. I'm going to put a comma and VL name corresponds to last name positionally and uh, I would have to change this uh, string that displays at the end. Uh, let me uh, display a readable out uh, a, a string that would uh, display the output in a readable manner such as Lex's last name oh, I'm sorry. Lexis. Now the reason I have those two quotes is because I want to see the apostrophe in the word Lexis. Okay, so Lex's last name is and this should be followed by the name, the variable that's holding the last name. And this was a character variable, so I don't use the to char function. So it says Lex's last name is whatever the value is. And then this should be then followed by another string. So I have another double pipe. Again, I open my quote and earns the salary. Close the quote, followed by the variable that holds the salary. and the variable was v salary not salary okay so now i have uh, to have two quotes uh, close uh, parentheses at the end okay so what should happen is it should tell me Le lex's last name is followed by the name and earns the salary followed by the salary value And that's exactly what I get. I get lex's last name is dhan and earns the salary 17000 in this tutorial, I showed you how to write uh, select statements inside a PLSQL block. The into clause was mandatory when writing these select statements so that the values that are returned by the query are put into memory variables that can be referenced in the program. In my next few tutorials, I'll keep building on the body of the program and we learn different types of statements that can be written inside the PLSQL program. I hope you find this tutorial useful. For other videos, tutorials and articles, you can take a look at the oraclecoach.com website. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening.